Welcome back everyone to Pontus Fathom Press. This is Fantastic Four Friday episode 3 and we are going through the uh, the Fantastic Four comics that I kind of grew up with. Uh, this episode we're on the next issue. It's the October 1979 issue of Fantastic Four uh, issue 211. You can see it was 40 cents comics back then. Behold Terax the Tamer. And it says down here with this fantastic cover, right? You've got a, it's a burn sign at cover. And you notice how Burn is still kind of in that, doing a bit of the Kirby style. It seems like that was a, a template for Fantastic Four. Like you didn't mess with, you didn't mess with the, the look of Fantastic Four. When we get later into the series and we start looking at some of uh, Burn's reinterpretations of this, where he kind of adds a li little bit more softer lines, kind of a little bit, an advancement of that Alpha Flight style, uh, you can see some real changes. But this is pretty. Uh, pretty much on the mark. You see this awesome cover here. It says, Behold Terax the Tamer, introducing a new superstar in the mighty Marvel Universe. Uh, so, yeah, this was huge stuff. Again, this is uh, October. This is the fall of 1979. Uh, me and my friend who are into these books. Now, this is a monthly book I buy. So, uh, really excited to jump into this one. Before we start, quick shout out to Pontus Fathom Press. Books one and two of the Quantum Locksman saga. This will be a, a, a trilogy. A third book is planned for this trilogy. William Mitchell's Dead Sons 11 and William Mitchell's Locksman of Quanta. Check out the links below. This is sci-fi 11 heroes uh, reanimated in a dying universe by the mysterious black hole entities called the Erebus. And the Locksman of Quanta takes us to the Quantum Locksman and the Quora of Locksman where they are monitoring and looking at these universe-shaking events across the multiverse. This gets to AI machine origins, ancient aliens, and uh, human history from Middle Ages, uh, Giordano and Bruno, all the way up to gray aliens today. So real real tour de force, kind of got a Doctor Who vibe to it. This is sort of a mix of a, a crime heist and a, something like an Armageddon or a, a, a Sunshine movie, a Danny Boyle's movie. Check it out. I think you'll like them. Uh, help to support the channel. As always, like and subscribe, ring the bell, help the algorithm find this channel, and uh, we appreciate your support. Okay, jumping into 211, Fantastic Four. This stuff, I remember, this was a fantastic lore. First of all, I also used to get, I think my dad got me silver into Silver Surfer. He bought me a, a, a reprint series that they did of the uh, John Buscema uh, I believe it's Stan Lee, John Buscema, uh, Silver Surfer comic. That uh, you know, it's got the classic covers with Silver Surfer on the board, and it's got a, an issue with Surfer versus Mephisto, Surfer versus Thor, and it was kind of like post Silver Surfer's, um, post Silver Surfer's uh, ban where he couldn't leave the Earth. Galactus has prevented him to soar the, the cosmic. Byways, you know, he used to always talk about this and that Stan Lee verbiage that's so fun the way they did the Fantastic Four. But, they, but I remember from my friend and I were looking at this, like the, the Galactus Herald lore was so cool. And then we found about, we found out about, you know, after the Silver Surfer, there was uh, Fire Lord. It's like all of this lore around Galactus's heralds. This was the stuff back in the day, you know, this is pre MCU stuff. And when the idea of Galactus getting a new herald, fantastic stuff right so this was like a, a real in, integral ep, uh, episode of my uh, comic book fandom reading so you see in a remote corner of, of our expanding universe on a tiny barren rock strewn moon of an event, immense gaseous giant a scarlet helix of light suddenly shimmers into carrying four somewhat startled but anxious passengers Johnny says where are we what planet has Galactus sent us Torchy, I've got a feeling this ain't we ain't in Kansas anymore. You gotta love this stuff, right? You get this great silhouette of Galactus, great, great use of the layering back there. We've also got Herbie here. Kansas is more than three thousand parsecs from here. Herbie, it ain't bad enough that the big G had to send us halfway across the blame universe. Did you have to pack along as well? Knock it off, Ben. We've got a mission ahead of us, remember. Don't give me that line, mister. All I remember is it was you who who sold the earth down the river. Oh, yeah, so last issue. Reed basically tries to to trick Galactus, as he always does, by saying, you can, we'll let you, 
will put Earth back on the table for you to dine on. Uh, because Galactus had promised he would never return to Earth. But now Reed needs him to return to Earth to help fight the Sphinx. So you can start seeing here, this is very much John Byrne style looking aliens, right? These guys with the the war men are closing in. We can't let them take us alive. Reed, I can hear their thoughts. And there's a number of stone knights coming after them. So, as usual, Fantastic Four end up in the middle of uh, some other uh, aliens versus aliens. There's some robots on the prowl after them. We don't have to pull our pu punches, so... Uh, Hold on, Stretcho, I'm coming, gangway. It's clobbering time, you junkhead rejects. He does all of his lines, right? They've got this ability to telepathically hear. Um, it says, We've already weakened by the Skrull's metabolic aging ray. Blast it, sis. This seems like such a hopeless assignment. Even if we find Galactus's herald, even if Galactus can save the Earth from the Sphinx's revenge, how can we probably re possibly reverse the Skrull's aging ray and boom? The alien hits Johnny in the back of the head. What are you doing? We're trying to save you. I had no choice, alien. Punishment for resisting the warman is torture and death. So we find out that on this planet, is this is the city-state of Terran, lorded over by Tyros the Terrible, Tyros the Tamer. So this is the race of, of Tyros. Galactus sent us on an impossible quest. He knows our powers are at the weakest, and yet he wants us to defeat this, defeat this planet's undisputed warlord. To accomplish that, we not only have to successfully battle Tyros, but we might have to take on his entire army. And Tyros has got his um, harem, and he's drinking from this horn, and he looks very, this is very Jack Kirby, right? It looks kind of like the New Gods kind of style. Uh, definitely cool, he says. Greetings, aliens. Tyros welcomes you to the court of Terran. Come, provide in creature comforts that I shall provide you. After all, once I am through with you, it shall be impossible for you to ever enjoy anything again. Mm, I might spare you, woman. You have always, I have always appreciated a beautiful female. Get away from him, Ben. I'll handle Tyros. You will? And how do you expect to do that, fool, when I hold the power to instantly destroy you in my hands? Read! That does it, muttonhead. It's you and me now. You can see that the Fantastic Four, they're aging here. So you see how Susie's getting a little older looking. Reed's looking older. She turns invisible. Uh, she she uh, deflects. She causes uh, Teros's aim to be off by punching into him. Johnny burns his restraints and the restraints of Reed and Thing. We've got a clobber in time here. And then once, once, uh, once a thing punches him, he goes, what madness is this? I've never been struck before. Then maybe I ought to do it again so you don't forget. What's going on? He's starting to glow. This must be Galactus' is doing. So he's cowering here. They get on the transport beam and they get taken back to... Uh, so they, they basically beat, beat Tyros... And Galactus is aware of what must be done, but there are also priorities. And this is where you got that lore I'm talking about. Oh yeah, Gabriel the Airwalker. That which I bestowed only thrice before shall be granted to Tyros. First there was created the Silver Surfer. He whose power was inspired by the riders of the sea. Then we did Gabriel the Airwalker. And in his memory I did construct a robot recreation, which you four did destroy as well. This was another cool... Um, Herald. Most recently, I created Fire Lord, whose flaming power shone as a beacon in the eternal night of space. And now, Tyros, I command you. Wait, what are you doing? Metamorphosizing, you fool. Now, this also looks like that that John Byrne, I mean, not John Byrne, that um, John Buscema interpretation. So I see a little bit of that John Buscema stuff here. Uh, the way uh, this reminds me of that same Silver Surfer series I was talking about. When Galactus is done, you shall be Tyrus no more. You shall be a man long forgotten and become a thing of legend. Behold the new herald of Galactus. Behold now, Terax the Tamer. So, in the theme, you had 
Gabriel the Air Walker, Surfer the Seas, Fire Lord the Air. Now Tyrax, Terax can lift mountains and earth. He has the power to. Uh, he's of earth. He's an earthen being. He can release the molten ground, and he can rule with a fist of unshatterable stone. And these are great, like, you know, displays of his powers. The way he does goes to the four panel here. That's pretty cool. So, so now Ty Terax is is launched, and he gives him his axe. I remember I drew this axe so many times. I think I've drew, drawn this axe a million times. I thought it was so cool. We'd always study the the weapon of him. Terax tries to rebel against him, and he reduces him to a worm. He says, I can just reduce you to dust, and then I can recreate you. And he goes, please, I bow before your greatness. Command me, Galactus, and I will serve your every win. So I think what happens in the Tyros transformation, he kind of was fearful before. Now he realizes how powerful he is. He just needs to bow to Galactus. Sort of in his uh, culture, he works toward the, the highest power, which is Galactus here. And so now Terax is the new herald. Finally, we wrap up here with uh, getting their side of the bargain. Hey, we brought, we brought you Terax. Let's go back to Earth. Uh, Galactus gets on his his uh, sphere ship. I shall destroy this would-be conqueror you call the Sphinx. And once I am done, then the Earth itself shall finally belong to Galactus. And then we go epilogue. You know, because his, his voracious hunger has come back. On the moon, overlooking the great looming ball known as Earth, a solitary figure stands silent and observes. It is almost time now. The Sphinx has made his base upon the Earth, and the great Galactus comes speeding to do battle with him. All that I have awaited these past years now finally comes to fruition, and that which transpires shall be written in all the annals of time to come. There shall come the greatest cosmic battle ever to be witnessed by man, God against God, and the earth's slender fate teeters in the balance. And yet there will be sorrow when this battle is done. For earth, fair terror, above all other worlds, I have watched, born, and die. Only earth has intrigued me. Truly I shall mourn its passing. This stuff, this panel stuff, was. this is the epic... This is why I like Fantastic Four, uh, the whole Silver Surfer saga. You know, getting this view of the Watcher, Earth's importance, and the Fantastic Four role in this bigger cosmic story. I mean, this is a story that MCU should have used a long time ago. Maybe they're going to go into it. But, but uh, yeah, let's leave it at that. The next issue is Clash of the Titans, Galactus versus Sphinx, Battle Between Titans. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Please leave your links and comments below. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next reading. Take care. Bye-bye.